everybody, it's Lisa Oliver here again, and today we're going to have a really quick chat about one aspect of show versus tell. So if you're already always struggling to get this right, then stick around and watch this, this video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Oliver. I am an, a self-published author, indie author of... Uh, I think it's just over 80 titles at the moment in the MM Paranormal Romance genre. If you want to know more about me and what I do, then you can simply put my name, Lisa Oliver Author, into Google or my name, Lisa Oliver, into Amazon, and I will be there. But anyway, let's get on to the important thing. This business with show versus tell. I don't consider myself a new author, and I still struggle with it. But so I, what I decided to do, instead of just embrace the whole freaking concept, because it is a huge deal, but when you par it down to its smallest nutshell, the idea is that you are meant to show your reader what is going on as opposed to telling your reader what is going on. Now, there are some exceptions to that, obviously. Narration comes to mind as the first one. Now, I, for example right in two person POV, third person past tense, right? So there are some aspects of my story that are narrated. That means I am filling in a few gaps for the readers of maybe like, for example, this is a sequel book. So I might be filling in a bit from the previous story to let the reader know about how that fits in with this story. Um, like, okay. Just for example, this is a classic example here of narration. I thought I would use one of my stories so that we can get a better idea. So let us just use this one highlighting tool here. And if we go here, okay, all right. We don't want to talk about that. So like how Stefan genuinely loved pizza and a quiet night in and how he hated spending money on what he considered unnecessary things. Now, I'm telling the reader that, or rather, Lucifer's thinking about it, and the narrator is telling the reader about the thoughts of the things that Lucifer was learning about his new mate. And one of those things is, uh, you know, based on that thing, why spend money when we don't have to? So we're already explaining to the reader that Stefan is one who doesn't like to spend money unnecessarily, but Lucifer then carries on that thought because it's sort of like a transition thing where he goes to open the door. I could probably, um, instead of doing that, I could have probably discussed the decor. Um, I could have mentioned about the, you know, the weather. I could have done a whole stack of things. But this is the epilogue from the previous book. And the reader already knows a lot of that stuff. So I put this in instead. This is a clear case where I have told the reader something that was relevant but to have shown that in a scene I've shown it by example but not in a scene it's not playing out we're not seeing Lucifer and Stefan arguing about pizza toppings or whatever else is pineapple a thing I'm on the side of pineapple just saying on pizza anyway so for me, so in some cases, show is necessary. But the thing is, is that you don't want your entire book to be told to the reader. Because the problem with telling is it creates a distance between the reader and the characters. And what you want is for your characters, your readers rather, to be immersed in the character's life, to follow along with them to want to know what happens next. You want them to care about your characters and you want them to care about what happens next because that's what keeps them turning the page. So if you're just telling them something, it's not necessarily going to do that. So one tip, and this, as I say, this is just one tip, okay? If you get told that you do too much telling and not enough showing or things like that, which pertains to emotions, go up to your find section here on Word 
Now, I am really sorry. I don't know a lot about pages. I don't know a lot about Google Docs or anything else like that and whether or not this function is available. But in Word, you go to Find. There we go. And see, I've already done it because I had a little look. All right. And I typed in the word feel. OK, because... If you say something to, if you, if your character, if you write, um, Lucifer felt angry, or Lucifer, or he was feeling angry, or whatever else, or how, you know, whichever tense you're in, if you use the word feel or felt, then you are telling the reader how that person feels or felt, as opposed to showing them. And while sometimes, Again, sometimes telling them is not a bad thing. If you do that all the time, it can, it, 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 you don't get as much depth with your character. Now, I don't think feel actually worked with this because unfortunately I wrote a scene in here, in this one between Stefan and Lucifer and um, Stefan used the word feel as in, telling Lucifer how he felt, and Lucifer was busy telling him how he felt, and that was actually the crux of the element. But we'll try felt and see if that makes any difference. Okay, and then we'll have a look. So if we click on this first one, we've got this thing here. He'd been hunched over for what felt like hours. I could change that, but I actually won't, because I've already said here that it was quite some time later when the recording was finished. Stefan yawned, it's implying he's tired, and he stretched his back. He'd been hunched over for what felt like hours. So in that case, I felt the word felt was justified. And then, you know, it carried on. So what was the next one? Let's see if we can see. Okay, Stefan felt rather than saw Lucifer take a step into the room. Mm. That's a vibe thing. Now, see, I'm not going to change that. But if anybody's got any ideas on how I could, have a look at that. If you feel somebody, you know how you become aware? And, I mean, I suppose I could say that. But then I would, yeah, I could rewrite that whole sentence. It could um, say something like, Stefan become aware that Lucifer had taken a step into the room. And you know what? We'll change that. We'll change that. We'll become that. Stefan had become aware that Lucifer had taken a step into the room. Now, the problem is with that is then do I justify his vibe or do we just hope that my readers understand that we're talking about vibe? Um, okay, now one word over here is pause, so you can edit, so we'll just click the arrow here, so you've got a little arrow up or a little arrow down. Well, we started at the beginning of the document, so we'll click the little arrow down. Um, Stefan did his prim way of sitting, reminded Lucifer of when they first met and how his mate always felt as if he had to be so tightly controlled pain. Again, that's not an incident I can really change because that's Lucifer thinking about Stefan's behavior. And again, the prim way of sitting is, is already that example. It's already given an example. Um, whether people would understand that and whether, and I mean, I'm not saying that could not be completely rewritten because I actually think it could. So if you feel that it can, Take that thing, that sentence. So that sentence starts with his prim way of sitting reminded Lucifer of when they first met and how his mate always felt as if he had to be so tightly contained. And write that as if it was a show, not a tell. I believe it's fine the way it is. So what's the next one? Ah. Now this is probably one that could be changed. Okay. And notice how they're all lined down there. Sorry, I did mention, meant to mention that. You don't always have to click on the arrow. If you haven't been editing, you just click on the next example down. Okay, so what have we got here? Somebody has to be someone sometimes making a decision one way or the other can literally mean life and death, and it has to be done quickly. 
Most of it didn't understand if you installed them on Adrian or not, but it's back to four bad hours. At the upset. Mmm. But. The churning mouse in the gut suggested they were. Is that any more descript descriptive? Are we suggesting? Yeah, I'm not sure, again, that that's a very good example. Does it add more depth to Lucifer? The fact that we know he feels upset and irritable and... <laughs> anyway, it, as this is what I mean. This is a very thing. Because I'm actually looking for an example of, like, he felt angry or he felt mad or he felt sad or things like that. Because those are examples where you can change them to make it look really good and add more depth to your character. I'm still, I have clearly picked up the wrong file, but still, we'll click this arrow and we'll see what the next one. Uh, do you think they would have felt it when Jasmine blew herself up? I think that was felt in the word the way felt was meant to be used. I really do. Yeah, we'll just leave that one. And now this is another one. And this was actually one of the ones that made me feel that we should have this discussion. And I really would like your input on this if you're happy to give it. Lucifer, in this scene, Lucifer is telling Stefan something he thinks he won't like to hear. So he's being very, like the words were spat out, quick like bullets. And Stefan felt the hit. Now, in this instance, would it be better to say that Stefan reeled from the hit rather than felt the hit. Does that then give the impression of this bang, you know? Does it do that? Yeah, I actually think it does. We'll take that out. We'll take that one out. Reel back from. Would you, can you reel forward? Is reel back a case of putting two things together that are unnecessary? You know what? That's what my editor's for. So if my editor's watching this, please check that when this comes to you. Right, okay. So Stefan was feeling the impact of the words and the ignorance behind them as if those bullets had hit their mark. So we've definitely made the point that what Lucifer said was cruddy. Okay, so we'll click the next thing down. Right. Okay, this is a case where I think the word felt again is probably just going to stay there. After Gaston's death, Stefan returned to the town of his birth purely and simply because it was where he felt the most comfortable. People can feel comfortable. That's not a show or tell. Well, actually, this whole thing is a tell. This whole scene, this is a, this is a narrated set part because this is like, a, this is the beginning of the chapter. We're talking about them traveling. So I'm filling in the um, reader on a bit of backstory that they may or may not have got from book one, because remember, this is a sequel. It's enough to fill in a few gaps for anybody who's picked this book up to read as a standalone. And it's also then reminding readers who have read the first book, um, just of those bits, for example, Gaston's death, um, you know, the abuse by, te by Technic and things like that. So... That is a narrated scene. It's going to be a tell because the narrator tells you a story, not shows you. So that one can just stay where it is. Um, now, what have we got here? Okay, this is another character. I said goodnight to Ethan. I saw him in the morning. I Okay, we'll just change felt to believed. And I don't honestly think... <laughs> that that makes much of a difference. <laughs> but it kind of does if you're using this as a way to find out if you show more than tell or you know. Now oh, I'm getting them mucked up, aren't I? If you tell more than show. Hmm. Okay. Ah, now again, see, this is a narrated section. Wow, 
if you know, you know so look at this it's actually quite handy when you look at thing okay nothing stefan felt as though he'd invested a piece of his soul with every little bug bird or critter he made but then i actually just noticed there i had got hated twice in the same paragraph which is not right because stefan hated to leave things behind for others to suspect he ordered a little beetle to explode after final it was not something he was happy doing not Okay, but see here, see here, I actually see here a clear example of show, which is quite handy. Okay, now Foster had gotten into the car while Lucifer had grabbed him and had wrapped his hand around the bottom of his mouth like this and had quite literally driven him, dragged him out through the reception lobby room of the hotel and out to their waiting car because they believed somebody was watching him. And so... You know, and Foster is clearly, he's going to be fighting this because he's got to make it look good for the people who are watching him. Um, and so they get out and they get away. But then instead of sort of saying, oh, that he was, you know, he was mussed up and his jaw was probably aching. Instead, I wrote, Foster straightened his sleeves and cuffs, implies wrinkled clothing. And then wiggled his jaw backwards and forwards. Do you know how you do that sometimes if you hurt it wrong the wrong way? There was a distinct red handprint over the bottom half of his face. So you're implying discomfort because of the redness, because he's wiggling it. Yeah. See what I mean? That is a show. Instead of that, Foster's jaw must have hurt. That was showing that it was probably going to ache. It probably felt a bit blurred. And that was an incident of showing that rather than telling it. So let's go back and have another look. And we've got one more in here. I guess Foster has felt as though he's been followed since Ethan disappeared, right? Is Foster... Okay, now how do I've got two? Okay, so why did you spill all that shit at the hotel? We sort of felt like punching him. I can change that. I could change that. I'm not going to in this instance, but um, you could put something like Lucifer's palms itched or Lucifer's hands clenched in fists to imply he wants to punch him rather than just saying he felt like punching the man. You know, but it, actually in that instance, it wasn't a big deal and we already know a fair bit about Lucifer, but definitely for a new, client, uh, a new character, you'd want to do something like that. Um... And then where I've said, oh, I guess Foster has felt as though he's been followed since Ethan disappeared. Stefan is doing that, that thing that you do where you're talking about one person who is there, but you're talking to the other person as though he isn't. And then, you know, but then it's sort of, you know, and then it sort of carries on with that. You know, he's actually talking to Foster. Take a minute, help yourself, then give us the truth before Lucifer throws you out and probably doesn't bother using the door. Again, it's it's like, you know, he's just going to throw you out or he's going to do you harm or whatever else. It's just an understated way of saying that Lucifer's probably going to use some violence. Um, and that's, you know, so this is just a, 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 a tiny little hint that if you go through your document and use the words felt or feel or feeling, then you can look and see whether or not, because that is a classic example of a tell technique, where you say that somebody felt something. I don't know whether or not I've got things like anger. Uh, would feel angry, wouldn't he? Uh, again, those are the, you can see I'm looking over here and I'm looking at it and I already know the signs that the, the scenes that those relate to. And so again, the words are relevant the way you are, but you could try the things with like the words for angry, the words for hurt, the, even the words of they felt love because there are so many thousands of ways of writing how a person might feel, feel love. 
So when you want to add more depth to your character, add more personality to your characters, and immerse your reader more into the story, then consider using the word find option and look at words that relate to emotions like anger, hurt, pain, um, happy, sad, and what have you, and replace them with examples of how a person would feel. Uh, what would happen to a person's body if they were feeling that emotion? Or how they might express that emotion physically? Um, and look at changing that that way. And maybe that's just a little reason, a little way. You'll create a bit more depth in your stories, and you'll just not get those. There is too much tell, not enough show. But some people seem to want to tell you about your books all the time. <laughs> anyway, my dears, I'm trying to keep this one short tonight. So that's just one tip. I do appreciate show and tell is a very complex topic. There is a lot more that can be done about it. But if you're like me and you actually don't, you just want to get on with your writing, this is one little tip that might help you show more and tell less. So until next time, please hit the like and subscribe button because it does my, my YouTube channel so much good. You have no idea. And until next time and the next video, um, don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. Any questions at all, please comment below because honestly, I answer everyone. I absolutely promise that I do. And until um, next time, hug the ones you love, my friends, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.